beautiful, fantastic, amazing world and you, individual out there. Today, I would like to speak a little about self-acceptance comes from acknowledging who and where you are and vowing that means promising yourself and well those around you the spiritual beings around you to do better or to purify or to grab a hold of this and train this and strengthen that and yeah whatever is needed in the moment based on what shows up that is where you gain self-acceptance self-acceptance doesn't come from finding faults within yourself and saying yes it is something wrong with that and that's just who i am self-acceptance doesn't come from that kind of accepting self-acceptance comes from I acknowledge that weakness of mine. I acknowledge that habit of mine. I acknowledge that kind of deeds I'm doing through certain situations. And I vow to do better. I vow to do it differently. To try to find a new method of doing things. Trial and errors is often what is needed when it comes to growth in life. Being an initiate of life. I always speak to you when I speak, those that have an inner knowing, those that truly have come to know that healing comes from grabbing a hold of what we see as less perfect and over time gradually making it, transforming it, purifying it so it can become a part of us that we might be grateful for. Yes, we are grateful even now for are more weak sides of life but that is the gratitude thank you for showing me this so i can do something about it if we only see every fault everywhere and do not do anything about it either from our own point or putting in actions to change the circumstances it will only be a participation to the problem you will feed into that fire by you doing a little different for yourself seeing yourself as you do things making yourself aware of why you do things how you do things and how you react in many ways it will allow you to accept yourself for as long as you vow to heal you will always have support in the spiritual world even when you feel really bummed out when you feel out and down when you feel disconnected and when you don't feel you have you are given the power to operate in a most effective and loving way that means you are meant to feel like that in the moment to over overcome to strengthen, to purify, and to master yourself. Because in the end, you are the ones, you are the ones feeling like this. And it is up to you to find out why and how you can do better and how you can change it and make yourself a closer to the human being. Or you can curse it and you can be angry with it and you can degrade it and disrespect it with whatever anger and fury you have and that brings well destruction to your own body and it is not very dignified in the end everyone has these outbursts sometimes when we are stretched too thin over a long period of time you snap in the end. That happens. It happens to anyone. Just try to be stressed for a longer period of time and then someone comes poking you. Well, it is like poking a stick into a beehive. You do not do that because you know the consequences of it, which also indicates the other person's responsibility for their actions. 
this is a social interaction that, well, requires awareness from all sides. And the self-awareness is your strongest gift. It is your most important strength in spiritual development. Because you become, it's like you have a higher ego that observes your lower ego. Your lower ego is this that is down here in this physical world, acting, reacting based on what the body is experiencing. But you have a higher version of yourself that is observing from a higher vantage point that sees the reason why we experience things and what lessons we learn from them. The more lovingly objective you become, the easier this becomes because you do not feel that someone is attacking you in the end. You do not feel like there is some schemer in the background of this uh, cosmos that is scheming against you. And it is just karma and strengthening of inner faculties and growth. And in the end, we ourselves have lived many different lifetimes and have karma that we have accumulated. And as long as you do your work, you won't be overwhelmed, but they will intertwine karma in between here and there in your life so that you can slowly but surely pay for it, you know? We come down here to make amends after all. Plus, well, growing as human beings, becoming stronger and deeper and more understanding. If we do not ask any of these questions, if we do not care for any of these things in life, if we truly do not feel that these things are important, what do you truly deem important then? Do you deem important what you can eat? If it can't be eaten, then it is not important. Think that for yourself. Is the only thing you do in life eat? That means consume and, well, just being here. Or is your purpose here to grow, learn, heal and teach others, te learn from others, study life, being curious, finding out what life is about, finding out what you are about as a human being? Don't you find these things important? I find that more important than anything we can find out from the outside. Anything that has to do with, well, materialistic things. Picking up a flower and smelling it and appreciating it. Now that is something that gives soul depth. Now, going, going to the store, paying for that new... I was trying to find something that was highly unnecessary, but at the same time poignant in a, in a sense. Uh, that, uh, that you, you get my drift. There is almost any example, any example that has to do with buying a certain item to, to fulfill and appreciate a certain need you have. It is no depth to it. But it is a depth to appreciating life, flowers, the forms and movements and also, well, the emotions and the depth of life that we normally necessarily take for granted. Because, well, it's what we have been taught. What can you eat? If you can't eat it, it is not useful. And that is also how we <clears throat> completely and utterly lose ourselves to culture and being dignified and have dignity, being oper uh, operational and effective and also understanding in a social conversation, deepening our understanding for another human being, trying to understand our senses, but also our thinking, feeling and willing and everything in between. We have forgotten this because this was meant to be forgotten for a little while. We were meant to turn our face away from the divine, lose ourselves a little, so that we can choose again for ourselves to turn around and choose the divine again. 
by our own freedom because there is no well right now in this world if we see it only materialistically there is no reason to ever believe that we should turn around again because why should we yeah we have all we need we have everything we know no 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 the reason why we do it is because this freedom we choose, the freedom of choice, of morals, of love, our inner choices we make, and do it with freedom, it required us to quote-unquote hate God. By doing so, by making it believe so that he doesn't exist, we have that as a standard. And the only... We choose... Two, even though there is no, what should we call it, proofs, you have faith. You turn around again by knowing. It is hard to explain, but it had to come to this, the individualization journey. You becoming you individually and you awakening to the choices you have. The choices in faith or the choices in despair. If you choose to be faithless, hopeless, and only see darkness and despair, that is, that is a way to go. But to overcome it and to grow out of it and to see above this shadow, above this darkness, you are shining a light into it so you get to understand it. From above and go down in and shine out to shine. Nothing is out of limit in a sense. Except actions that is immoral and destructive of course. Even, even they come in, in karmic consequences sometimes. That can't be denied. But by chasing and following and fighting towards the good. It is either we are going to become completely egotistical, separate and bubbled in, segregated, isolated in our own bubble. And what the only thing that matters is your opinion and how you can get your next fix of life. And it doesn't matter what others feel. It doesn't matter wh who's getting in the way. That is the war all against all. And that, like last time, the, our civilization went under by water. Before that, it was fire. And the next time, it will be us. We will destroy ourselves. That is the next downfall of mankind. So, by cultivating morals, understanding and inclusion, union in individuality for all, we counteract these overwhelming mechanizing and segregating forces so that we in individuality can choose to include and to be understanding and loving with others, even though we are different. It is why we are different we should be grateful. That's how we learn freedom by loving by choosing to love another even though they are different and not and not allowing the privilege of loving another just because they are alike you so it's much easier that way but that is no fun that's no challenge at all try to find try to find and love someone that is so different from you that you will actually have to look for it now then you are on the right path because th now you are consciously looking for so something, that wonder. I'm trying to waken that up in you too. This choice you have, this love for life, this oomph. Because we all have it, but it is the Christ in you. It is the divine in you and you have to acknowledge that. Once you have acknowledged that, you are given that power. You are given that Radiance, you shine out like a sun, and that sun power, that symbol of the sun, are the sun, and you are working with the sun on earth. 
a shining samurai, a shining knight, a shining paladin is the best way to describe it. That's the feeling, to be an upholder of balance, an upholder of love, an upholder of bravery and of courage and of understanding and inclusion and union and light and warmth. I think this was all, yeah, maybe, I think this was all. I want to share this with you so that you can know that there is no only coldness. It is not only darkness and hopelessness in this world. It is what we have chosen for ourselves. So if the majority have chosen to see this and feed into it, well, it is something that we will need to introduce a new way. There are not only two ways to do things. We have countless ways to do by trials and errors and, well, experimenting and finding out. How afraid are we going to be of change, honestly, and how afraid are we of ourselves? How much do you think we are going to mess up here by trying something new, by trying something that is more uplifting and more caring? They have, they have taught you that it might not be the most effective thing we do, but it has been working for so long. It hasn't. It never has. In relation to what? To the high civilization and cultures of the ancient times. We are child's play in relation to that because we had direct, direct contact with the divine at the time. And our civilization and cultures were built under the divine. You see it in the high, in the high civilization of the Egyptian and the Greeks and the Persians in their high times, before their infancy, and now after their infancy and before their decadence, in their high culture, oh, they were so beautiful, so beautiful these cultures were. They can't even be described in words so unified we were. Today we have lost it because we are becoming more and more individual, so that we can do the same as before, but we choose to do it individually and come together individually and learning from each other. A union in individuality, it is hard to even visualize that because it is a new faculty we are need to train. We must train to have these two realities kind of at the same time in our consciousness. We have to, to have many layers at the same time in our consciousness so that Based on the moment, we can become conscious of different parts of ourselves if it is necessary. That flexible we need to be to actually bring about change for ourselves, to become this alive, to become this transforming, this metamorpho, uh, metamorpho, metamorphic. You see, you need to be alive and awake. That is where you find truth and answers to these things. Thanks, everyone. May the Godhead and Christ and the hierarchy and the Holy Spirit and the ancient masters of old all guide you. And may you find your path in this life. And may you find your strength and inner love for life and for human beings. Love you all. Thank you so much. Goodbye.